Are there any questions about our presentations on Japan tomorrow? Yes. Which do you think is cuter? Wearing these very expensive Japanese hair barrettes like this? Or like this? Well, Angela, both have their merits. How about you surprise us tomorrow? Ahem. <clears throat> Charlie? Um, yes, Miss Gatto. You will be ready for your presentation on those warrior monks from 14th century Japan? The ninja warriors? Oh, yeah. I certainly hope so. If our presentations in the gymnasium finish on time tomorrow, I'll read some more haikus. Yes, George? What's a haiku again? It's a short Japanese poem. Haiku! Hey, I'm a poet. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, you haven't even started your presentation. Sure I have. I've been researching these ninja comic books. And in a few minutes, my Aunt Cassandra will be back from her vacation in Japan. And... She's bringing me a cool ninja toy for my presentation. Come on, let's meet her. There she is. Chucky Chan, what a surprise! Good to see you, Aunt Cassandra. Chucky Chan? <laughs> Mona Chan? Lily Chan? Adding Chan to one's name is a Japanese form of endearment. Cool, huh? I was talking about the Chucky part. Oh, but wait a minute, I almost forgot. Charlie, here's your package. <laughs> A pair of genuine toy ninja nunchucks, the ninja's traditional weapon of choice. Wow! Cool. Are batteries included? No batteries needed for these babies. Just raw human energy like this. Hi! Oh my! Don't mess with the ninja. <gasps> that was some kind of ghost ninja. Well, now that I've broken them in, you can wow everyone with them in your class presentation. Thanks. I think... Sorry about the damage. My head's spinning from jet lag. Cool! Look at these weird serpent heads carved in them. Looks like the armories Miss Gato told us about. Which means these nunchucks belong to a real Japanese warlord. It's not a toy! Not a toy? Wait, if I seriously hurt someone while demonstrating these in my presentation, I could get an F! Or land in juvenile jail! We better go see an expert about this. So, you like the sushi? Mm, yeah, great, really great, 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 delicious! Mm. <laughs> and they say kids are afraid to eat raw fish. Raw fish? I'm feeling kind of full. <laughs> Me too. Nunchucks. Mm. They look very antiquated. Yeah, and old too. Let me just try and... <gasps> The ninja's stick must never be stolen. You will be sorry. Oh no! He took my nunchucks! Oh, so sorry. I don't know what happened. The ninja ghost! That was him! The ninja ghost? Those were his nunchucks. He came back for them. Now he's wandering around free. And he's armed. What should we do, Mr. Tetsuro? I'm not sure, but when I'm faced with any challenge, cooking or otherwise, I say fight fire with fire. Of course. We have to get trained in the martial arts. But where are we going to learn about the martial arts by tomorrow? I know the perfect karate master to get us ready for battle. And she won't charge us a thing. A 
Oh, you can keep that pair of genuine antique Edo Dynasty Yamabushi Monastery nunchucks as a bonus. How do you know what they are? I read ninja comic books. Vampire, Ninja Zatman, and Ninja Princess Giant are ready for battle? Well, it's only been five minutes of training. But if you keep practicing... Ready? Kick! Step! Punch! Kick! Very good! I think you ninjas are coming along just fine. Can you teach us how to do the secret brain claw paralyzer of the Ninja Masters? Um, let's keep that for the second lesson. I'll be back in a minute. You kids practice the routine. Charlie, I'm going to break this piece of wood like Karate Masters do on TV. I don't know if that's a great idea, Charlie. On TV, they show experienced professionals. Yeah, but I'm just one lesson away from learning the greatest secret of the Ninja Masters. Hi! Charlie's not completely immobilized. Me too. We need all the help we can get battling this ghost ninja. Good news! My wrist is only fractured. This cast will be off in a week or two. Plus, I got a note excusing me from the presentation. That's a good omen. What if the ghost ninja doesn't show? Don't worry. My vampire senses tell me your nunchucks and the ghost ninja will show up. And then what? We have these to battle him. I made some Kali sticks. They're the exact replica of a ninja weapon. Well, I improved it a little. The Ghost Ninja, battle postures! All right, Mr. Ghost Ninja, prepare to meet your doom. After him! Hurry, he's getting away! Well, children, where were you running like that? Principal Shabli, I, uh, w we, uh, you haven't seen a ninja, have you? Yeah, the, the ninja, ninja ghost. ghost. <laughs> <clears throat> ninja ghost? <laughs> Just plain ninja is already enough. <laughs> well, uh, you have overactive imaginations. He's got my nunchucks. You think he beat the ghost? No, the ghost must have dropped them to get away fast. And now Shabli's in danger. Class, we'll now start our presentations on Japanese culture. Hmm, yes, George? Miss Gardo, why are we in the gym today? Is it for the haikus? No, George, it's not for the haikus. But if you all behave, there will be a surprise at the end of the class and you'll understand the why we're ghost. here. All right. Now, first, Angela is going to tell us about the distinguishing features between herself and Japanese royalty. We share many of the same interests and talents. In fact, we both like to shop and buy really expensive clothing. Let's go. The party's over, Ghost Ninja. <laughs> All three of you are no match for me. Hi -ya! Hi -ya! <laughs> You're done, Mr. Ghost Ninja! I am victorious, like the bamboo dragon in the house of chickens. I, oh, I, I don't I break boards, I but Zama Ninja can I send you flying! I'm an old ghost. Too old to fight young opponents like you. Ah! Yes! You got him! You got the ninja ghost! Uh, please forgive me. My nunchucks aren't working right. They got out of control. I, I, and, and Charlie helped me. Thank you, Charlie. Really? Uh, Charlie, you weren't able to do your report, but I'm giving you an A for bravery. Oh! 
Thank you, Miss Gatto. Principal Shobley, you seem a little too shaken to give us your surprise demonstration of your ninja combat techniques. However, you could tell us the story of your nunchucks. They look like antiques. Uh, yes, of course. Hair from the Yamabushi Monastery uh, during the Edo Dynasty. Uh, but how do you know all this? I read comic book uh, studies on Japanese culture. Should we tell him? Nah, no need to make two ninja warriors feel bad in one day. <laughs> of course the real T-Rex probably didn't sound like that, but it's impossible for us to know for sure. Do you think we'll see one of those at the museum exhibit tomorrow? Yeah, I heard they have a real life-size replica. I can't wait to check it out. Plus, the Velociraptor, the Triceratops, the Seismosaurus. Think fast, Bones. Look out! Ah! 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 Hey, just who do you think you... Oh, gee, I... I, I mean, um... <sighs> wow. I've never seen Angela speechless before. When you're Mona the Vampire, you see some weird stuff. But that has got to be the weirdest. Class, I want you all to give a warm St. Faith's welcome to Hal T. Neander. Welcome, Hal T. Neander! Well, well, <sighs> wow. Hal's father is the new natural history curator at the museum. And Hal's brought something very special to show us. Oh, that's wonderful! What is it, Hal? <laughs> it's actually very, very old dirt from the prehistoric exhibition Principal Shobley's taking you all to tomorrow. It's the prettiest dirt I've ever seen. <sighs> Since when does Angela like dirt? Do you think some weird anti Angela has taken over her body, Mona? Actually, there's something weird about Hal. Almost primitive. He's probably just shy. I remember how hard it was to be the new kid. Hal, wait for me! Would you mind carrying these heavy books for me? Ah! Wait a minute! Uh oh, he's in for it now! <laughs> no, no, not me, Hal. Just my books. It must be hard learning a new language. What's your language? German? Norwegian? Icelandic? Meet Bunga! No stop! Nah. Wow! Hal just saved Angela's life! My vampire senses are on high alert. This is definitely a case for Mona the Vampire. Hello, children. This exhibit celebrates our friends from prehistoric times. Let's visit one of my favorite Jurassic era friends. Prehistoric fossil collection. Be on the lookout for anything suspicious. Does anyone have any questions for the professor yet? Anyone? Anyone? Hmm. Mona? Just exactly how real is this stuff? Well, it's mostly replicas, except for this fossil collection. Neanderthal man, woman, and child. Where's the child? Are you okay, Hal? Oh, Hal, it's scary in here. Hold my hand. Oh, cool dinosaur eggs! Is the meaning of this? Nothing's alive in there. I saw something. It does have a hairline crack in it. Must be from the move. Now, 
Let's visit one of my favorite Jurassic era friends, Mr. Tyrannosaurus Rex. There's something positively unnatural about this natural history exhibit. Duncan Lily? Here. Neander Hal? Yeah. Neander Hal. Neander Hal. Neander Hal. Mona? Of course! Um, of course I'm here, Principal Shobley. Move it or lose it, sister. There's no doubt about it. Hal T. Neander is the missing Neanderthal child from the exhibit. You mean just like what happened with the dinosaur egg? The professor brought Hal to life? But why? That's what we're going to find out. It's not like Mona to be late for her own mission. <laughs> Make way for Mona the prehistoric vampire. Oh, and Fang. replacement. I know it's tough adjusting to a new life, Hal, but don't worry. Thanks to this genetic animation solution, soon I'll bring all of our friends here to life. Once I've brought my prehistoric army to life, I'll be worshipped by the entire scientific community as they shower me with Nobel Prizes. Then I will rule! you're doing, young lady. We don't allow cats in here. Sorry. Um, we go to school with Hal, and we just wanted to ask him out for ice cream. Our treat. I recommend the Vampire Special. It's named after a very loyal customer. So, Hal, what area did you move from? Or should I say, era? Come on, Hal. I've got lots of money, and I'll buy you all the ice cream you can eat. Hmm. One super choco fruit sundae for my friend Hal. We've got to get close to Hal. With his experience in handling the prehistoric world, he's our only chance to stop the professor. We'll never get near with Angela stuck to him like glue. Time for Operation Eject Angela. Hey, Angela! They're selling autographed Tiffany dresses at Maison de Murray. Hey, Angela! There's a beauty spa grand opening with free facials. Yo ho! Princess! Your new dollhouse has arrived! Oh. No like it here. How like museum exhibit? Hal stay there. <laughs> Don't worry, Hal. We'll stop the professor, or my name isn't Mona the prehistoric vampire. Hal, where have you been all this time? We've a lot of work to do. Hold it right there, buddy. I'm Mona the Prehistoric Vampire, and I'm not gonna let you get away with this. History belongs in the past. <laughs> you can't stop me. I hold all the power of prehistory. <laughs> Quick, Satman! Catch! <laughs> Eventually, you'll have to stop. 
And then you'll, you'll be at my mercy! He's right. Think, Charlie. How do you slow down prehistoric life? The Ice Age! Come on, this way! <laughs> it's locked, and only I have the key! <laughs> Me get a shiny stick! Wow! We lucky. Thanks to that defective air conditioning system, there's a whole new exhibit. Poor Angela. She hasn't been the same since she got the news that Hal's dad resigned and moved them to Iceland. She'll be okay. I have a feeling she's going to meet someone just like him. are we at now? Like 23? Oh, I read my lines. That cat wasn't part of the scene. What was a cat doing in my scene? Mr. Stein is right. There has never been a cat in any Terry the Terrible movie. That doesn't answer the question. Can someone tell me what that cat was doing in my scene? Whoa, Fang really did it this time. Fang thought that actress was in real danger. He acted like any good feline should. Cat-like. I don't know, Mona. Frank Stein is pretty upset. I'm going yeah. back to my trailer. Call me when you're ready. Ouch. Darn. Cat spoiled my performance. We better say we're sorry, Fang. Of course Frank is dying to come to the house to see me. But I'm so busy. I came here to pencil him in. It's so cool that Frank Stein's here in our town, shooting a Terry the Terrible sequel. Terry the Terrible is like the best monster ever. Hmm. Ahem. Barring, of course, Von Creepshula. Officer Halcroft? Are you moonlighting? Yeah, I'm Mr. Stein's bodyguard. I'm his biggest fan. My favorite is Terry the Terrible Part uh, 5. Isn't that the one where Terry the Terrible conquers the walking torsos? That's right. What a classic. A 
simple apology should do it. No, no, no. This is not what I asked for. Ah, what a monster. Don't go in there. He's a monster. <laughs> Who are you? What what do you want? Ah! Mona, you kids know this area is restricted. Why would Frank Stein be putting on makeup instead of taking it off? Mm. <laughs> He's even more handsome in real life. <laughs> it's him! It's him! Guess we weren't the only ones who found out Frank Stein was eating at the Tony's. Sorry, we are completely booked for the night. But please come back tomorrow. You're not butting in again. Leonardo! <laughs> you, least of all, can't possibly expect to... <laughs> I'm not going to miss another chance to apologize to Frank Stein. But you heard what Leonardo said. He said us. But he never said anything about Zatman, Princess Giant, and Mona the Vampire. Today's Pescari special. What does Pescari mean? I think it means fish in Italian. Where's Fang? Who or what are you? Uh... And what are you doing in my kitchen? I didn't order fish. I ordered the Pescari special. Oh, oh, my Stein has upset Mr. Staff. Oh, what am I saying? My staff has upset Mr. Stein. Uh, here, 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 here you are, Mr. Staff. I mean, Mr. Stein. Pasta was too salty? Or maybe Frank Stein's monster act is more than just acting. Yoo oh, our eyes met. Oh, he's so dreamy. I'm tired of Stein's tantrums. They're costing me a lot of money. I'm thinking we should pull the plug. I'm tired of his tantrums too, but we can't pull the plug on Terry the Terrible Part 9. I have a contract, you know. Pull the plug on Terry the Terrible Part 9? But we've been looking forward to the sequel for months. We'd better find out what's up with Frank before he winds up an unemployed monster. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to get into costume. It's him! Already? Quick, in here! I'm the most talented actor of my generation, and they keep handing me these B-movie parts. No one loves me for what I am. No wonder I'm so hideous. <laughs> Well, the show must go on. Mr. Stein? Who is it? They're ready for you on set, sir. I'm the star. I'll be there when I'm ready. Yes, sir. <laughs> Whoa. He really is a monster. That would explain why he's the best in all the history of horror movies. Shh. Listen! All people will remember is how mean he was and how he brought an end to Terry the Terrible. Yeah, looks like we'll have to retire Terry the Terrible altogether. We can't possibly let them retire Terry the Terrible. 
everything is so quiet. Maybe they pulled the plug on the movie already. Yeah, you're probably right. Let's go home. Shh! I think Mona has a plan. You do have a plan, right, Mona? <laughs> It's coming from over there! Wow! I've never heard anyone snore like that! If Officer Halcroft wakes up, he won't be able to resist this donut. That'll buy us some time alone with Frank Stein. It's him! Neat! This set is classic Terry the Terrible! Oh, spooky! Fantastic! Uh-oh! Whoa! Time for an anger management class, buddy! Uh... Gotcha! Ah! <laughs> I'm Zapman, by the way, and I'm a big, big fan! You'll have to do better than that. I'm Frank Stein. <laughs> Stop it! No, no! Only room for two. But you'll be next. I'll make sure none of you nosy pokes ever reveal my true nature. <laughs> this brain transplant will fix you, brats, for good. <laughs> You're no help to them. Uh-oh. <laughs> Which brain should I start with? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a hero by the toe. <laughs> the world's a stage. My Mona! so <laughs> Not the cat! Get away from me! Don't come near me! Some tough guy you are, scared by a little kitty cat? Yeah, this has all been an act. I am so tough. You just act like a monster, because deep down, you're just a big softie. No, stop! Please, stop! Only if you promise to show everyone how nice you really are. Just because you look like a monster doesn't mean you have to act like one. Okay, I promise I'll be nice. Just please stop. I'm just a softie, but I scare people because I'm afraid they won't like me if they find out. Everything all right, Mr. Stein? Yeah. Actually, I've never felt better. Frank Stein wanted to do the premiere of the movie at my place, but the pool was being cleaned. You know, you're pretty good. Ever thought of acting as a career? Nope. Vampires usually try to stay out of the limelight. <laughs> that must be my Vampire Illustrated. Mona! Just the person I wanted to see. I've got some wonderful news. I'm getting hitched! That's wonderful news, That's Mrs. Fantastic. B. Congratulations! Thanks. And Mona, I want you and Lily to be the bridesmaids. Really? Yes. And Charlie will be the ring bearer, along with Blitzy, of course. But this is so sudden, Mrs. Bryerson. When did you meet the lucky groom? Last week, at the Lawn Bowling League. He's a real charmer. The only problem is Gertrude, his bowling partner. She claims she saw him first. Oh, I hope she doesn't cause any trouble. She can be a real witch. I should be going. I've got a million things to do. Goodbye, Goodbye Mrs. Bryson. Hmm. I've never been a bridesmaid before. I hope I don't get stage fright. 
By the way, my mother's organizing Mrs. B's wedding, so don't be late for the rehearsal. <laughs> oh, great. That means Angela will be there to ruin everything. Look, there's Mrs. Bryerson now. And that must be Gertrude. Mrs. Bryerson said she's a real witch. <laughs> Gertrude? That was close. We're gonna have to keep an eye on that Gertrude. Mrs. Bryson is choosing her wedding cake this afternoon. These Sorceress Ray relocators should help us protect her from any funny business. Mrs. B about that cake. Huh? Oh, hello, Mona. Um, I think this one is the nicest. Huh? Hmm. Uh, no, I, I really prefer that one. The little bride and groom are just so adorable. I'm still sleepy from that little catnap on the way over here. I need to wake up. Make room for the cake, children. It's delicious, my dear. Did you bake it yourself? Oh, Unger. <laughs> All right, people. Let's get this rehearsal going. Here are the rings, Charlie, old bean. Take good care of them. <gasps> You're on cake decorating duty, Mona. Mrs. B said something about you giving it a personal touch. <laughs> Oh, yuck! I hate this outfit. Look, I've had enough of this whining. We have a wedding to ruin. My whining? Why, you... Shh! Just as I suspected, they're under Gertrude's spell. Ah! Oh, I didn't mean to scare you, dear. I know what you're up to, Gertrude. Up to? Well, I just came to get the banquet room set up for tomorrow. We've got to nab that little bride and groom before Gertrude uses them to ruin the wedding. <gasps> They're gone! They must be here somewhere. We'd better get them back on the cake, or who knows what will happen. <laughs> Oh, no! We're too late! <laughs> I've always hated carnations. Timber! Grab them, Fang! Oh, no! The vase! <laughs> what a disaster! Those animals are out of control! That woman is responsible. Gertrude? That sweet old lady? Don't be silly, Mona. She didn't mean to let Blitzy in. Gertrude and her little minions might have won this round, but the battle has just begun. Places, everyone! Better call the organ tuner. Are you almost done, Mom? 
We have important wedding business to discuss. Well, I'm glad to see you're taking your job so seriously. There, have a look. You look like a big piece of cotton candy. We obviously can't do battle dress like this. So make sure to bring your alter ego accessories tomorrow. Ugh, I'm worried about Unger. He should have been here an hour ago. I can't imagine what's holding him up. Well, I drew him a map myself. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think I lost the rings. Do you see that? Those rings aren't lost, Zatman. They've been stolen. Without this ring, I do not be wed. <laughs> They're heading for the sewer! You really should be more careful with these rings, you know. Eleven o'clock. We've got one hour to put the bride and groom in their place. Get away! Ah! Ah! Got you! Rats! These neutralizer coils should hold them! Nice work, Zatman. Ah, oh, here you are. Your parents are looking for you. We've got your little minions, Gertrude. They can't do your bidding anymore. Oh, you found them. Oh, they must have fallen off the cake. Hello, police. This is Princess Giant reporting a missing groom. This wedding is going to happen no matter what you do. Watch out, Mona. Jealousy jolts. <gasps> You'll never find under the wedding. <laughs> Get out your relocators! The relocators aren't enough! We'll have to use a mega deflector! <laughs> it's true. I suppose the map I gave Unger was wrong. My jealousy gets the best of me sometimes. <laughs> but I really do want things to work out for Madge and Unger. I feel terrible that he hasn't shown up. Don't worry. I have a feeling he'll be here any minute now. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll turn up. Thanks for the tip, Lily. No problem, Officer Howcroft. Just doing a bridesmaid's duty. And if anyone has any reason to protest this marriage, speak now or forever hold your peace. Phew. Phew. <clears throat> well, actually, it would appear we both have a case of cold feet. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> You've all been so wonderful, but we've been single so long. I think at our age, we'd rather just keep dating. <clears throat> well, it seems we'll dispense with the preliminaries then and get right to the party. I'm sorry things didn't work out for you and Unger, Madge, but I'm certainly glad to have my lawn bowling partner back. No need to apologize, Gertrude.
those county fair games are fixed. They must be. You would have won something too, Charlie. Thanks. I knew something was weird about that fair. Dad, what do you make of that? I think those are potato plants. <laughs> and I think we should be going now. Glow in the dark potatoes. Sounds pretty good to me right now. You and your potatoes. You must have had three orders of fries today. My parents cut potatoes out of our diet because of their allergic rashes. Now I'm scrounging for every chip I can get. We're going to be doing some scrounging tomorrow for clues. My vampire senses are sprouting. Hmm, a fenced-in pond. What are they trying to keep out? Charlie, maybe you can look into that barn. I think I see one glowing. Listen to this. The ingredients include jellyfish. No trespassing. Get out. Not until you explain these glowing potatoes. And jellyfish in the seeds? That's nothing. Just potato seeds genetically spliced with jellyfish genes. They glow when the crop needs a water in. Are you saying that the potatoes tell you how to run your farm? No way. Well, sort of. It's just for saving water. Remember that heat wave? We gotta conserve water. If you're so environmentally friendly, why are you littering your field with this seed bag? This bag should be in the recycling box. You better be gone when I come back, you hear? Jellyfish and potatoes. Who knows what creepy creatures could emerge? Look! Potato fish! They're heading towards that factory! Mona! I've been captured! If you don't leave right away, I'll call the police. What happens when people eat potato fish? That's what we have to find out. Poor Blitzy. He's locked outside of his house. Mrs. Ryerson! <laughs> what was that? Blitzy was locked outside. Oh, my goodness. I was so caught up in my lounging, I forgot poor precious Blitzy outside. I'm so sorry, Blitzy. It's not like you to forget about Blitzy even for a minute. Yes, I, I feel just awful. What's wrong with me today? I think I know. <laughs> Come on, have a bite. Your brain would make such a nice, cozy home. <laughs> uh oh, I'm feeling tempted. Charlie, no! It wants to live inside your brain. <laughs> Go ahead, run away. Spud's potato fish are everywhere. Tell Spud that he'll be dealing with Mona the Vampire. Good dog, Blitzy. Now we can relax in front of the soccer game together. It's nice to have our brains turn to jelly. This is getting serious. We need an adult witness. The farmer? No, my dad. He saw it with his own eyes. I'll have a talk with him. We'll meet you outside. Dad, we met the farmer of the glowing potatoes. Can you file a complaint for us? Against the farmer? No, the farmer works for Spud, the leader of the potato fish. They're part potato, part jellyfish. Why are you home from work? Funny thing, we got the morning off. Yikes, don't lose the ball. Sorry, Mona, a bit distracted by the game. Okay. It's not like mom and dad to lie around eating a bag of chips. There must have been a potato fish in that bag. I'm calling an emergency meeting at Zapman headquarters. My basement? Good idea. It's probably the only potato free zone in town. It seems like the whole town is just vegetating in front of their glowing TV sets. What does that have to do with jellyfish? Let's see. It says here that jellyfish are animals that simply float in the water, waiting for their food to come to them. That's what's happening to the town. People just sitting there. Turning their minds into jelly. Officer Halcroft needs to hear about this. <laughs> Hi, kids. Talk about a slow day. 
Not anymore. We have an emergency. Potato fish are living inside people's brains, causing them to stare mindlessly at the TV. Go! Didn't you hear? People are wasting away in front of the TV. There's no law against that. Someone pass me some more fries. We'll have to handle this ourselves. The only way to get real information is to hear it directly from a real potato fish. Maybe we can find out more about their leader, Spud. My favorite chips! No! We don't know which ones are real chips and which are potato fish. This is the real test. I knew it! The potato fish are somehow linked together. Now I'm free from the chip bag! Spud is transmitting. We have no natural home or habitat, so we must find our own. Just as our leader Spud promised! Hmm. It's time we paid a visit to the factory that made these. Transmitting, they start to glow. The glowing could be an energy transmitter. We gotta deactivate the leader, Spud. Potato fish, potato fish, your brain is what we wish. Potato fish, potato fish, what a tasty dish! We can't let them make it to the factory! Ugh. Yeah, they're too slippery! It's... It's Spud! You have done well, my potato fish. Stop the intruders. We need some fish to occupy their brains. Soon we will have every brain in town. <laughs> you love potatoes. Go ahead and have a bite. I suppose one couldn't hurt. Spud! I've found another home for one of your beloved potato fish. Well done. Now you can relax again. It's so great not to have to think, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Is there a TV around here? They've got Charlie! <laughs> That's it. Water stops the glow. That's how we can disconnect them from Spud. We gotta lead them to water. Okay. Boy, am I hungry! It's working! Watch this! Hey, potato fish! Need a place to stay? Ah! in the water, they just sit there like jellyfish. But there are so many more, and Charlie's under the spell. We have to get Spud. The game's over, Spud. What's your problem? We're actually helping humans to relax. Just sit back and wait for things to come to you. But humans can't relax all the time. Nothing will get done. My parents will always be at home. Oh, come on. Give relaxing a try. Instead of all this paranormal investigation activity, open wide! Ah! <laughs> the brains of our town are safe again. Spud is a duck. This country air is relaxing. Oh, geez, look at the time. I've got work to do. My parents are active again, Fang. I guess.
guess we should probably help the farmer clean up the mess back at the farm. I guess these newfangled glowing potatoes wasn't the best way to save water. I'm going back to watering them on a schedule. Hey, Mona, why'd you stop working? I think I'll just relax and watch TV. Just kidding. <laughs> Since when do you wear curlers? Great Aunt Beatrice arrives today. So? So? So look at this place. It's a mess. Aunt Beatrice is a world traveler. She stays in five-star hotels. What will she think when she gets here and sees this? Well, it's not like we're charging it, right? Mona, when was the last time you gave Fang a bath? Wow! How long will she be staying with us, Mom? Probably until she finds another husband to hang out to dry. <laughs> Mona, why don't you go and clean up your room? Sure. But does that mean I get to stay home from school today? Miss <laughs> Gatto, may I be excused? Now, settle down, class. We'll resume our study of entomology. I've got a special treat for you today. The Black Widow Spider. Can anyone tell me what the difference is between these two spiders? Charlie? One is a harmless household spider, and the other is the most venomous spider in North America. That's correct, Charlie. This is the Black Widow. She has a distinct red marking on her abdomen. And this ingenious female Black Widow Spider knows just what to do with unfaithful dates. Uh, I mean, mates. She devours them. <gasps> How does it feel to be hung out too dry? is making such a big deal out of this, Fang. Is the doorbell broken? Oh, I'm t terribly sorry. <laughs> Don't be silly, darling. I was just kidding. <laughs> and this darling must be Donna. It's Mona. No! Get the cat away from me. Oh my, I can't stand cats. Where is the powder room, darling? I need to freshen up after this flight. I'm sorry, Aunt Beatrice. Please, follow me. Maybe I should bring Aunt B in for entomology week at school. Wow! Mom, can I go over to Lily's? Oh, darling, don't come and sit with us for a bit. Here, I brought you a little something. Aren't they lovely, Mona? Aunt V just came back from Belgium, where they're renowned for their lace work. Look what she brought me. Um, thanks, Aunt B. Mom, can I go now? Please? So, don't tell. Are there any eligible bachelors that you can set me up with? Oh, oh you are terrible. Mona's principal is single. <gasps> These are beautiful, Mona. Lily, didn't you hear a word I said? Yes, I did. Your Aunt B is a black widow, and she's come into town to find her next husband, or eat her next victim. Yeah. And her next victim? Husband number four? could very well be Principal Shobley. I'm not going near her. Can I have these gloves? Now, honey, you know how I feel about you playing matchmaker. Aunt B's a great catch. She's elegant and rich. Yeah, and you and I both know how she got to be so rich. Aunt B and Principal Shobley would make a great match. Or what about Officer Halcroft? 
You know what they say about a man in uniform. We have to stop the Black Widow before she strikes again. She could be lurking anywhere. Mona Parker, please report to the principal's office. Mona has a I just met your Aunt Beatrice. She's a lovely woman. She's waiting for you in Principal Shabley's office. Must save Principal Shabley! Ha! You can do better than that. I'm Mona the Vampire. Bats are my best friends. <gasps> Watch out! Mona? Darling, what happened to your face? Anyhow, it seems that you forgot your lunch and your mother insisted that I bring it to you. Here! Mona Parker, you know the rules. No vampires allowed in school. Now go and take that ridiculous outfit off. <clears throat> we wouldn't want your aunt thinking this school didn't have a proper dress code now, would we? I didn't forget my lunch. Mom packed it into my Von Creepsula lunchbox, like she does every day. Yes, well, my mistake then. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to have taken up your precious time, Principal Shawbly. You must be a very busy man. Uh, that's all right. I'm not that busy. Then perhaps you have some free time after school today to show little old me around this fine town of yours? You can pick me up after school is out. You know where to find me. She's trapped Principal Shabley and is about to pull him into her web of deceit. How do we stop Principal Shabley from going out with the Black Widow? Principal Shabley is in charge of the detentions this week, right? I don't want a peep out of you. I'll be back. I will not run screaming through the halls. Vampires rule. I will not run screaming. Okay, the coast is clear. You guys know what to do, right? Yeah, but we really don't want to rat on you, Charlie. You're one of us. Thanks, guys. But this is for a good cause. I will not lock the computer dweebs into the computer lab. How Principal Shabley find out? Email. If we keep him this busy, there's no way he'll make his date with the Black Widow. I wonder how Lily's making out. Oh no! Principal Shabley, you've caught me about to deface school property with graffiti art. You'll have to bring me to detention, right? Lily Duncan, you know better than to do that. You're lucky you're on the honor roll. I'm releasing you on your own recognizance. Uh, Zatman, do you have your Zapparama with the bug spray? Check. And Princess Giant, do you have the bug grenade? Check. Good, let's bust a bug. Over there! That's Principal Shopley's car. Aww, they're kind of cute. Hello? Let's not forget who's on the menu. <gasps> Hello, Donna. Don't you think your principal would make a suitable mate for me? <laughs> it's Mona. And we know exactly what you plan on doing with him. Well, I'm glad to see that you're learning something at school. I guess we have Principal Shabley to thank for that. Zatman, no! <laughs> What'd you do that for? Pest control! <laughs> Out of my way! Who are you gonna call? Bug Busters! <laughs> Don't! <laughs> 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 
A man in uniform! Mona! Help! Do something! No! No, I can't scram! <laughs> Why didn't Beatrice decide to leave early? I don't think she liked sleeping in our guest room. When you're used to five-star accommodations, a single bed doesn't quite cut it. Well, I think this place is better than any five-star hotel. Here, here. 